The Chevy Malibu, it's a lot like T-Mobile. In the big four, but bring it up the rear in sales. Let's see if an all-new version for 2013 can move it up the rankings as we drive the Malibu LTZ and check the tech. Now, for 2013, the Malibu is on a whole new platform. In other words, the entire underpinnings are new. GM did that for two reasons. One, they want to sell one Malibu in every market worldwide. Also, they want a better platform to compete against Fusion, Accord, and Camry that are ahead of this car in the sales race in that order. They've also tried to take some Camaro DNA. Hmm, the gauges are like out of a Camaro. The taillights kind of suggest a Camaro, but this is not a performance car, certainly not in this trim. It's an everyday car. Let's see how it does on that front. Now inside, poor old GM just can't stop doing fancy. I mean, what is this upholstery? When the question is, do you want caramel brown, dark brown, black, or blue stitching, the answer should never be yes. But that's what happened here. And that, that's more chrome than on an entire Audi. This cabin looks like it's the perfect car for a junior executive in the pimp industry. They got to tone it down. On a brighter note, Chevy MyLink is shaping up to be a real bright spot in the Chevrolet product line. Okay, this is not the most ambitious head unit in any car today. It's no Audi killer, but what it does comes off pretty well. Like the rest of the cabin, it's a little bit garish. The icons are a, a bit much, and there's screen after screen of them. They've not done a good job of making this a vertical stack. It's a very horizontal set of pages of functions. That got a little busy. Now, one thing you see missing here is a navigation tile. This car doesn't have navigation. That remains optional even with this rather elaborate head unit. Instead, we had to rely on OnStar, which you got to hit the button and talk to the service, and then they'll feed the directions here to the LCD. I would much rather get the onboard nav unless you're really lonely and want to have someone to talk to. You've got a picture viewer here, utterly worthless, but someone's attempt at doing cool. Much more positively, the Pandora integration is the best I've ever used. All I did was pair my phone the first time I got in this car, I punched the Pandora button, and bang, everything just connected and worked. Usually you gotta fiddle around and kinda rock it back and forth between the phone and the car. Big ups on that. And you've got all the major modern sources here. Nothing significant is missing, though no HD radio. Now check this out. This guy's got a flip-up LCD, seven inch, nice saturation and brightness. That gives you a little bin here where you can put your smartphone or media player. But unlike some cars, let me see here, no, there's no power outlet in here, which would be nice. And one downside of having that flip up screen is that it does give you a little bit of flimsiness on the screen. So when I'm pushing buttons actually on the display, you got kind of a cheap feel. Not bad, but it's a little unnerving. By the way, there's a base audio system and we have the upgraded audio system. It's a premium Pioneer rig. It's 10 speakers, I believe. You don't get anything terribly advanced in terms of the DSP, or digital signal processing, but you do get a nice set of EQ, including something that is actually going to be a preset variety or standard bass, mid, and treble. The backup camera is optional at the LTZ level, and it's very simple. No trajectory indication, no guidelines, just a look off the stern. You can get a lot of different engines in a new Malibu, but they're all four cylinders at this point. There's a two and a half liter four, kind of the bread and butter, a two liter turbo four, the hot rod motor, and a 2.4 liter lean burn hybrid powertrain. We have the mainstream guy, a biggish two and a half liter four. All the engines have direct injection. You're looking at 197 horsepower here, 191 foot pounds of torque. Pretty big numbers from a pretty big four. Zero to 60, though, is also a pretty big number, unfortunately, about 8.3 seconds. MPG 2234. Side saddle, front wheel drive only. That six speed automatic is your only gearbox choice. Let's go for a ride. Now, like so many cars in the class of this guy, Accord, Camry, and others, indifferent driving is sort of the theme here. Let me put it another way. There's a very loose relationship between the engine, the gearbox, and what the pedal on the right is doing. These are not performance cars in this category of vehicles. They're utilitarian, they're grocery getters, they've got smooth rides. But the basic idea here is that this car is meant to have few surprises in its driving transitions, and that's what it delivers. On the downside, if you're getting into this car because you like to drive, you're going to be disappointed, at least in this one LTZ trim. I don't even have much to say about its 
steering and cornering because the powertrain doesn't beg you to even try that. Another bit of a gripe I've got here that also adds to the lack of responsiveness is, as I showed you, no shift paddles on the wheel, which are kind of becoming standard these days. And to get shiftability, you've got to put the gearbox lever back in M. Then you can use this little fiddly toggle on the top to change gears. That's dainty, not involved. A lot of folks ask, you know, how's the build quality on a Chevy product? It's real good. There's nothing about this car that doesn't fit beautifully, that doesn't appear to be bolted down real strong and real well. Overall, this is a great little highway car, a wonderful little grocery getter, but you're not gonna be very involved in driving it. It's a little appliance-like. Let's price this 2013 Malibu. We've got a 1LTZ. There's also a 2LTZ. That has a 2-liter turbo. Different car, different video. 1LTZ, which is pretty high trim, starts at about 28.6 for this guy. Now, 1900 bucks for the electronics and entertainment package. That gets you premium Pioneer audio, backup camera, as basic as it is, and garage door opener. Seems a little steep to me, but I'd rather do that than have some local shop tear apart my audio system to upgrade it. 795 is a great price to add onboard navigation, not rely on that OnStar stuff. And 395 is a steal for forward collision alert and lane departure warning. All in, you're looking at about a $32,000 car that competes pretty well with Fusion, Camry, and Accord.